What's up, YouTube? We're going to be looking at something a little bit in advance. Uh, so if you don't care about Battle Region or some of the new cards we've seen recently from Japan, you can come to the different video. But if you enjoy these kinds of stuff, leave a like down below, comment, subscribe, whatever. <clears throat> We're going to try to do some more of these frequently. Because in Japan, Battle Region has come out recently. I think it's been about two weeks now. Um, which means we have cards like Darkrai V-Star, the Hisuian Starter Vs, uh, and they're all in play and, uh, you know, I like to look at lists from time to time, kind of take inspiration from what's happening in Japan. So let's take a look at what's going on over there with a couple of deck lists that I found that were winning over in Japan at hohonews.net. So let's jump right into it. Let me angle my camera so I don't block some stuff. Uh, corner? Corner. Corner seems fine. Okay. Um, let's look at this Darkrai V-Star list. Now, Darkrai V-Star is one of the most hyped cards coming out. It looks like it's being piloted in this list with... Um, Arceus, as well as the Galarian Birds here, um, Ultra specifically. Uh, two Crobats just to draw cards. And we have, um, what is this colorless V? I don't know what that is, but uh, I think it's Ditto probably. I think it might be Ditto here. Pump Kaboo. Uh, and then you have the uh, Greninja here, the Sparkling Greninja, to discard an energy and draw two cards. And the rest of the deck looks pretty simple across the board. A couple of Peers, uh, light, uh, Bosses, um, Research, Dark Patches here. Um, bunch of dark energies and two double turbos for the rcs so a very consistent straightforward list it looks like and another uh dark rivy star list that was winning over in japan this one looks like no rcs just a lot more straight consistency with two choice belts the four dark patch um the same like kinds of consistency i think these are both i don't know what these two are here um i think it's clara's uh, based on what they look like uh, paired with the three Galarian little mini birds. So you're kind of playing a weird off prize game, trying to make them take more prizes than they need to. And late game, you can kind of clean up with these guys, it looks like is the idea behind this kind of a list. With one EXP share, you get to preserve a lot of energy. And with the Galarian birds, you get to accelerate one plus turn every turn. So with these, you can, I guess, get a ton of damage onto the board and do a ton as early as possible with Darkrai, because Darkrai only attacks for two energy. A very interesting concept. Now there was a Warm Atom list that was doing pretty well uh, over there. In Japan, using the Liopard that has trade ability. So we're going to be trading and using Chinchino as well to draw cards. So you had eight cards, it looks like, or seven cards to draw cards, as well as the Zorak line. One Galissapod, uh, one copy of the Mighty Anna that basically just pops a VMAX. Uh, if the opponent's a VMAX, it does no energy, I believe, is required. So you're doing 160 for nothing, which one-shots a Mew VMAX. So it's your answer to Mew, which is really nice. I'd probably like a second copy of this if I played Wormat on myself. And the Halucha gives you plus 30 um, so that's actually really, really good. Two mana feed, meaning that there's a lot of bench snipe that they were afraid of. Um, besides that, the list looks very straightforward. I think I like a lot of what's going on here. Uh, I would like some more ball search card consistencies. Maybe some more level balls in general. Um, because the entire Chinchino line gets brought out by the level ball. And you find all your small pieces as well. And probably another copy of this guy over here. Maybe a thinner line of either the Liopard or the Chinchino is what I would do with Worm Adam. Uh, and then we have Samurott making its first appearance. Um... This looks like a straight Samurai list. I don't know what the DNC does. I'm going to look this up right quick on my other monitor. DNC Battle Region. Uh, that might not give me exactly what I need. It did not give me exactly what I need. TCG. Okay, it looks like it is... It's when active, your opponent plays support to prevent all effects on your bench Pokemon. So basically, you're going to be using the uh, DNC to kind of sit behind as a wall to set up behind it. Uh, I don't hate that. You have the Intellion Lines of Samurai to kind of... Uh, and is this only one dark patch? That's very interesting and very random. Um, but I guess it's the Intellion deck, so you can find it when you need it. So an interesting look at Samurott to start there. Another Samurott list here. Um, again, paired with the Intellion. No, none of that fluff in the background. Just looks like straight damage. Looking for pings and then hitting them for a ton of damage. Uh, Raihan boss, like a very consistent build. Uh, two, two dark patch. This is very interesting to me when lists play like one or two of these cards that can excel like power up and accelerate your attacker very very quickly i don't know i would like more maybe but i guess it's an intellion deck once again so maybe you can play less and get away with it and it's fine um durant makes a friendly appearance once again in the format and it looks like miltank accompanies it this time and miltank for those of you guys who don't know does cannot be hit by any v pokemon which includes v star v max you know all that kind of good good stuff so this list uh looks very consistent. They have Bird Keeper still? Do we have Bird Keeper still? We do have Bird Keeper still, I think. Um, so Crushing Hammer, Bird Keeper. A little bit more of a, I guess, like pivoting around build. I don't know. I don't like the heavy Bird Keepers. I probably would just play Research. 
uh, more researches maybe, but I guess you don't want to discard all your resources, so maybe like Bruno, more Cynthia's ambition maybe, I don't know. Uh, and then uh, Mill Tank does 10 plus 20 for each of their bench Pokemon, so you have the twin energies to actually do damage if you need to. Another Durant list with Chandelure this time, uh, and I'm going to look up what Chandelure does really quickly while we're talking. Um, Chandelure, TCG. So let's see what this does. Uh, is this the one about Robo Clash? Or what, what does this one do? I don't know, this is the character art, so I have no clue. Uh, I, maybe maybe I'm missing a Chandelure, uh, Chandelure TCG Battle Region, maybe, something like that. Um, but uh, they're playing with Chandelure for some reason. I don't know what it does. Uh, Battle Region. If someone knows in the comments, you can tell me. I'll probably try to, I'll probably find it at some point while we're looking, yep. Once you're in your turn, when you play this card, you may discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. So basically, it's just another mill card as a form of a supporter, or not supporter, but like a stage two Pokemon. So you're playing thinner lines of your Durant stuff and focusing more on going uh, for an aggressive mill, it looks like. That's pretty cool. I like that. Then we have Arceus. Well, I'm just going to turn off my webcam, I think, because I don't think you guys need to see my face uh, because it's blocking the list. I'm really sorry. If you enjoy my cute face, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, Arceus, a Dragonite, a combo that I personally thought was very, very good off the bat. And But 250 plus 30 with a choice belt actually does not get you where you need to be. So pairing it with Halucha, however, gets you to 310, which covers pretty much any number that you could possibly want, actually. Uh, the only interesting thing is there's a Manaphy here, which would have prevented bench damage, I believe. So maybe I'm wrong on that, but uh, I like I like this list. It looks pretty cool. There's a Leon as well to get above and beyond. The Crushing Hammers don't really make too much sense to me. Maybe there's just a better card to play in those slots. I just don't like Crushing Hammer, especially when there's only three in this deck. Question mark, question mark, uh, ping. And then we have a Glaceon V-Star V-Max list, which I haven't seen Glaceon like kind of do well. So I was very intrigued to see this uh, deck doing well over there. Uh, it's only like a one of like a one off chance, but uh, it's cool. It's cool to see Glacian doing well. So if you're a Glacian enthusiast and a Glacian fan, here's a list for you guys to take. Um, and then we had RCS Ice Rider, which I thought gets way way better now because you have Halucha too. So you get the plus thirty, and now you can hit three ten damage, dealing with that Mu V Max problem if that was a problem to begin with. Um, which I mean it is with the two fans as well. You can uh, kind of win pe tempo pacing whatever against some of these other special energy related decks. And with the Halucha also on your board, you don't have to worry about finding the choice belt every single turn. Um, very cool. Very cool concept. Dragapult is back also. I was very interested to see this list. Playing the Tropius with Rally back, which indicates that there was some semblance of a like Umbreon-style deck that was giving it some problems. Uh, and I think Darkrai is also weak to grass. Um, so this kind of benefits that. I'm not entirely sure. Um... But the list is cool. The deck is cool. I don't think Dragapult can hold its own still. But Path plus Drag, I guess, can still win games. Uh, is all that really matters. And then we have another deck here. This one is a more Mill Tank focused deck with the babies. Uh, playing a different angle of the single price dark style deck. Using Mill Tank as a wall. And the Evotals to come in and clean up later. Using things like basic darks to just do a ton of damage with Sonia, The Raihan, the, the Clara to kind of clean up late game. Uh, three Dark Patch. The Freshwater set's very interesting to me. I don't know what does the 20 spread... Um, but I guess it's relevant enough. The Gorbis here to deal with Single Strike. Um, very interesting to me. I think this deck can be tweaked. And there's something here to be worked on. But it's a cool concept for sure. Also, the Bling is absolutely immaculate. Um, we have the Rapid Strike Inteleon deck. Playing a 1-1 style Rapid Strike Urshifu as well. Playing the Inteleon as well as the Octillery in the back. A bunch of 1-of supporters to help out. And then, you know, the traditional Rapid Strike Octillery engine with the 3 Cheryl's. Um, and then this is another really cool deck, another Mel Tank deck that I saw that was really, really cool. Cool. Using Beedrill, but actually manually evolving to the Beedrill, not playing Mustard, I believe, in this pile of supporters. So you're able to deal with the special energies behind your wall of Mel Tanks, which I also really like. I think it's a cool concept. I think Mel Tank is going to be good. Very good, actually, as a card. Then we had Rapid Strike Box. It looks like RCS Rapid Strike Box, playing a 2 2 Urshi line, 2 2 Sylveon line, and then a 1 1 Crobat, 1 1. Uh, Blaziken, some other cards in the back giving Sylveon that typing you need. Uh, playing a bunch of hodgepodge of stuff. Dealing kind of with the meta in whatever way you want it to be dealt with. Um, giving you just the correct typings across the board, I think, is a very cool concept. I've always thought Sylveon has potential. And another deck that has potential here is this two-prize, uh, like, box. Uh, Urshifu, RCS playing, like, your two-prizers in the back. Um, no, no Galarian Zap, those of you, which is interesting to me. But the other attackers I all agree with. You've got the two Moltres, the Hoopa, the um, Ditto. So you've got all these pieces to kind of 
supplement what's going on. I think Moltres would just or Zapdos would just slot in super easily into this deck using the Baby Mew as the engine, which I think is probably a very good new engine to play. Um, and then another Urshi list. This one is a more traditional Urshi list playing the Sprays. So you could bring up the Manaphy, spray it, and take two prizes, um, which is pretty good. Um, I guess in like a in the in a situation where your opponent wouldn't expect you to do something like that. So very cool. I like the Bee Burl engine, giving you more space to kind of play the game. And you use the Arceus to kind of get set up early. And then, yeah, uh, that's all she wrote kind of deal from here on out. No way to get Arceus powered up in one turn. Um, so that's the only little downside of the deck. Two Battle VIP Pass, a little bit interesting as well. Because you don't really find a copy, like a 2 of copy like this. So I don't know about that. And then Arceus Dalmise is another deck I saw. Uh, three Crushing Hammer. Again, very weird. I don't like that. Four Corrupted or like Collapsed Field. Also don't like that. I think just playing Path probably benefits you more. Hyper Potion's a cool card. I like that. Uh, and then Spirit Tomb, I guess, if you really, really hate Mad Party. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting. And then Single Strike does continue to make its appearance. Um, this is a more traditional build, it looks like. Nothing actually has changed too significantly here. Um, so, if you'd like Single Strike and you're sticking to your roots, a good deck for you. Uh, Blissey, Mill Tank, two big walls, two big tanks. You kind of power it up. You get the Spicy Curry card to heal up as well. A lot of healing. Um, and then, you know, besides that, you just kind of do Blissey things. Um, and then you have the walls as well. So another cool engine. This deck was blinged out, so I had to pull it out. I just could not resist. But it's another two prize RCS box style deck. This time you've got the Zapdos and the Moltres in the deck with two Luminians, Luminians the Ditto. No Hoopa here, which is interesting. I think Hoopa is very good in, in decks like this to cover two weakness typings. Um, but it's just your traditional two prize box style deck. And then you have a Mew VMAX deck. I think all the Mews did not change too much, but I thought this was a really cool build because it has the pickaxes and it has the basic fightings as opposed to the psychics. So with the pickaxe and the basic fightings, you can also power up a Mew in one turn in addition to using your phone properly. And the Glarian Zapdos also gives you a, a pretty good like early game out to just one-shotting something if your opponent's overbench. And I like that a lot. I think it's cool. Um, still leading into the Meloetta strategy with the four fusion strike energies and the modifiers as well. Uh, interesting take on Mew. I don't know if it's good, but it's an interesting take. Rapid Strike Malamar still exists. Um, here is a build. It has not changed at all, I believe. I think this is the exact same like style of build that's been played in Japan for a while now. So nothing has changed from that. Just want to let you guys know it still exists. And then you had the uh, Eternatus VMAX playing the Trade Lipard as well as the Samurott, a 1-1 one -one Samurott line. With only two Dark Patch, once again, one Galarian Moltres. But you don't need the E-Switch combo anymore to power up a uh, v -E turn VMAX in one turn. Now with the Dark Patch, which is pretty cool. Um, the Rescue Carrier is interesting as well. I don't know if that's necessarily needed. Um, but I guess maybe you can like bring a Zigzagoon back and that's like the whole logic behind it. Um, again, two Battle VIP Pass, very interesting. Not my cup of tea, but three Capture Energies as well. Uh, Jolteon is not dead. It's still alive and kicking. Four Cross Switcher, four VIP Pass. A little more of a weird Turbo style build here, it looks like. Um, just trying to get the Italian engine up as running quickly as running. One Mew. Uh, interesting. Don't know if I like it, but it's not dead. There's this weird Crobat Milotic deck that I just wanted to showcase. I'm not entirely sure what it's trying to do here, but it does exist. Just wanted to know that if you guys wanted to know if a deck like this existed, it does in fact exist. That is all. It's using Indeedee, I think, to close out the game and just draw a bunch of cards, but it exists. Uh, and then there was this water, um, like Aracuda Barrascuda deck, water box style deck with the Greninja to do a ton of damage. Also a really cool niche one prize deck that I thought was kind of cute to show off. Um, this is disgusting in terms of image quality, but it was like a Basque Legion deck that won. Um, you can see the Basque Legion here, Basque Legion Milk Tank. Another really cool card that I thought would have potential maybe, but not amazing. And then Lucario V-Star, one of our new other attackers coming into the format. A new fighting type attacker that has a ton of damage um, with the pickaxe as well. So Arceus, Lucario, B-Barrel here, kind of having that set up under your own path to the peak. I immediately, when I see B-Barrel, I think path to the peak. So you have this combo, and the pickaxe helps you set up your Lucario as quickly as possible. Now another take on Lucario is with Lycanroc VMAX here. Um, playing all these cards and using this Mightyena to kind of deal with Mew, um, which I like that idea a lot. Like the Mightyena should be an answer to Mew VMAX if possible. Uh, and then the pickaxe again coming in handy, the Galarian Zapdos as well. Um, a really cool concept again with Fighting Type and Lucario. And then we have Lucario paired with the Single Strike Umbreon to have the Gust Effect, one Dark Energy, because I think Umbreon is not the attacker here. Like you're never actually planning on attacking with Umbreon if possible. 
but if you need it, you have the one. But with the four pickaxes, the two echoing horns, the four bosses orders, it's very clear what this deck is trying to do. It's basically just trying to pull up something and pop it every single turn, if possible, with the Lucario. Um, and then we had a our, um, what's this guy called? Decidueye? Yeah, Decidueye. And this build was with Lycanroc, playing some fighting energies, uh, using the pickaxes as well super efficiently, getting the energies to hand with the Eldegoss, and being able to pitch them and do 270 damage. I think, yeah, 270 is the max, maybe. Um, yeah, a very cool concept of getting energies to hand. Another build here, using Frostlass to power up your Pokemon in one turn, basically. Um, Volcarona to shuffle all your energy back in. And then because Decidueye can discard any energy and it counts towards the attack, I guess utilizing some of these other niche cards to kind of ensure that you can power up and set up a Decidueye basically every turn. Power it up very quickly. Melanie as well, as your draw Excel as well. Um, another one here, this is a little bit smaller to see, but this is just a complete straight shot, like Decidueye, Decidueye with the Mew engine, powering it up and using Halucha to give you more damage. Energy Retrieval, a very forgotten card in this format will be very, very beneficial to this deck. And then we had uh, the Typhlosion, which is our final starter that we haven't really talked about yet. Um, playing in a spread deck with the uh, Mimikyu and the Acerola's predic uh, pred predictions, pr promotions, premonitions. I don't know. It's one of those. Um, and it's, you know, just a spread style of deck. And then, again, similar concept here. Um, but with a Greedent. I think this is Greedent, I'm pretty sure, to close out the game, uh, which I think is cute. And then you have, yeah, with the powerful energies, the turbos, whatever. And then you have the Ace Rollers as well to do a bunch of damage early. And then last but not least, a take on the Galarian um, or the Arceus Flygon Leafeon deck that uh, we've seen in the States here. A different take with the Leafeon to power it up. Um, no Beedrill, but the pickaxes help you power up stuff in one turn. So that is my take on looking at some of the new decks from Japan. A lot of interesting ideas. I know we're not dealing with these decks for another three months. So if you guys enjoyed the content, obviously like, subscribe. And we will kind of look at these. We'll revisit them in about a month when a new set comes out once again. And there will be a, uh, regionals in Japan with these cards. So we can check that out as well. And I'll be streaming that on Twitch.tv on March 27th. Come check it out. Watch. I'll be streaming the entire regionals, hopefully, as long as I don't get too tired. So come watch that with me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of content. And I will try to do more of these in the future. I know traditionally it has been a hit. So see you guys next time.